This week, the brand new, for 1970, Camaro Z28. Nineteen seventy was a very exciting year for Camaro fans because after just three years of the first generation car, Chevrolet came out with an all new Camaro for nineteen seventy. In fact, this car debuted on February twenty sixth, nineteen seventy, and it was kind of interesting the way Chevrolet marketed this car. They actually sent people to the Chevrolet Sports Department to go check out the new Camaro on February twenty sixth, and this is an all new car. The basic design concept kind of carries over from the first generation Camaro in the standpoint that it is a unibody chassis, meaning it's got a removable front subframe, and from the firewall back is kind of a monocoque chassis where everything is one piece. However, the car got longer, the wheelbase is longer, the overall length is longer. It retains that long nose, short deck look, and it's got a very sloped rear window configuration uh, but a very unique design with the way that rear window coordinates with the back of the doors, uh, eliminating any quarter window. So it was a very fresh design for 1970, and in typical fashion, there were many different versions of the Camaro that you could buy. The base engine was an inline straight six, uh, didn't make very much power, but then all the way at the top, you could get a 402 cubic inch big block V8. It was never sold with a factory installed 454, which was the hot engine for 1970 in the Chevelle and the Corvette. But it did have a very cool small block option. The 1970 Camaro Z28 had some big shoes to fill after the really successful 1969 Z28. And the 69 car had a screaming 302 cubic inch engine. But Chevy did it right when they outfitted this one with the all new 350 which made 360 horsepower, which was actually more than the big block in the SS396. The Z28 was born back in 1967, and it was a package designed to be competitive in Trans Am road racing. And back then, there was a 305 cubic inch displacement limit. So the 67, 8, 9 Z28s had a 302. Well, for 1970, this car now had a 350. And by comparison, that 402 big block in the SS Camaro was only good for 350 horsepower at a lower 5,200 RPM, but it did make more torque. It made 415 foot-pounds at 3,400. So you did get a little more torque with the big block, but less horsepower, and the big difference was the power-to-weight ratio. If you compared two factory-built four-speed transmission 1970 Camaros, one with the LT1350 and a Z28, and the other being an SS with the 402 big block, you'd find that the big block car was rated at about 11 and a half pounds per gross horsepower, and the 350 car was 10.7 pounds per gross horsepower. The big block car weighed over 4,000 pounds, and the Z28 was coming in about 38.75. So although it didn't have the biggest engine, the Z28 was an awesome performer for 1970. <laughs> All told, they made just over 8,700 1970 Z28s out of, I don't know, over 120,000 Camaros. So they're not super rare, but they're not very common either. The Z28's engine is all about high performance. It's a four bolt main block. It's got 11 to one compression ratio. It's got a forged crankshaft instead of a cast unit. It's got a high performance camshaft, uh, 458 lift on the intake side, 485 lift on the exhaust side, and the advertised total duration is 317, 346. So this is a cam that's designed to pop those valves open and keep them open to get a lot of air in and out of this engine. It breathes through a low restriction air cleaner, a Holley four barrel carburetor, and an aluminum intake manifold. All of the air emission system is in place. And one thing that I thought was cool about these is the valve covers are still the cast finned aluminum valve cover, and I believe the LT1 is one of the best looking small blocks ever installed in a car. In addition to that new high compression small block under the hood, the Z28 received an upgraded suspension system so that it handled as well as it looked. The engineers upgraded the sway bars, the shock valving, the coil springs, the rear leaf springs, 
uh, the wheels, tires. In this case, we're looking at a set of Firestone wide oval raised white letter F6015s with that called out 60 series oval. Back in 1970, a 60 series tire was a low profile roller. So they weren't bashful about putting that big 60 on the sidewall to let everybody know that this car was meant to go around corners. The rest of the driveline on this car is a performance clutch inside of a Muncie four speed transmission and a 373 rear gear ratio in the rear end. Inside the car, the four speed does not have a console, so it's kind of basic, again, trying to keep the car as light as possible. This particular car is wearing code 48 forest green, and it's got the white stripes on it, which leads us to the rest of the RS and Z28 appearance package. Our car is also wearing the RS front end, which uh, gives it a really good looking split bumper design and the extended nose. And it's so popular that most people today convert their standard bumper cars to the RS just because it looks so good. And the stripes, well, they tell everybody else that this car means business. But there's a lot of smaller details as well. The bright roof moldings and the door belt reveal molding, the bright hood and fender rear edge moldings, the tail and backup lamps with the dual concentric bright bezels. I'm also a big fan of the black chin spoiler and the ducktail deck lid spoiler that makes this car so aggressive looking. And inside you've got the wood grain on the instrument cluster, a wood grain horn insert, and satin finishes on the inside of the car. And it's got an FM stereo unit in the dash. And having driven a lot of these cars, I can tell you there is a marked difference between driving a first generation Camaro and a second generation car. That longer wheelbase and some of the suspension upgrades they made really make a nice difference. The 1970 Chevrolet catalog said that if the Z28 didn't get your heart pumping, maybe you needed to get in a Corvette. I don't know. I think this car does it for me. What do you think? You can share your thoughts on our website at musclecaroftheweek.com or our Facebook page. And click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel so you don't miss any more adrenaline pumping muscle cars like this one from Muscle Car of the Week. That was different. Got two different. Subscribe! <laughs> subscribe! That's right. Paying him to do that.